Hi everybody, Adam Steele from Hot Pole Studios here and today you may notice that things behind me look a little different. Today we're going to do the 2019 Studio Tour. So it's a new year and out with the old, in with the new is the old expression. So that's what I decided to do. I decided that over the years we'd built the studio up. We had an original idea of it being kind of an all analog style setup and uh, running cables between gear accordingly. And it just got over the years a bit crazy. And we had this wonderful wooden desk behind me, which is formally, formally property of the BBC. If you're in Britain, you know exactly how big Auntie Beeb is. If you're in America, imagine ABC, NBC, all of those rolled into one. They are the biggest thing in broadcasting in this country. And there was a building in Manchester that got demolished when they moved to Media City, which is where their new headquarters is. We uh, managed to snag this desk formally of BBC Northwest Tonight and Red Dwarf. Any sci-fi fans in, give us a shout. So, we've got still the Allen and Heath console on my left. That doesn't get used very much these days. That mostly gets used for extra channels because each channel has a direct output. So we use that for additional kind of secondary or tertiary tracks if we've got a really complex input setup going on. And that then feeds into some of the pieces of gear we'll talk about now. So, behind me, there's a lot going on. As you can see, there are three screens. There were three screens before, but they'd been standard screens in a row. And I've decided to go with this ultra modern style, big screen on a tilt and two screens at the top. It's more compact. It means that I can put the speakers, the monitors where I want them to be. It means that I can see everything that's going on on the main screen, have my uh, faders and mix window up at the top and have effects or whatever else I need up on that top left screen. The computer itself is down at the bottom on the left here. That's the rack unit there. Uh, that's still a, an Intel 6700K setup. I'm thinking about upgrading that at some point soon, but there's really no need at this point. Uh, the main interface that I use at the studio is the RME RADAT, otherwise known as the HDSPE. It's a nice, easy name. Uh, that's a PCIe card that goes inside the computer that's got lots of ADAT ins and outs. So that goes into a lot of the rack that's back here. So the rack, let's start at the top, shall we? It's a bit of an out of order sequence, but I'll explain what we've got from the top down. So at the top, there's a PreSonus blue tube. Uh, that's an old 12 volt uh, tube-ish mic preamp. I'm not really using that. That's for the talkback microphone and then that feeds into something a little further down. Beyond the power strip, we have what is my now main set of converters, the RME ADI2. Uh, this has two incredibly high quality converters going in and two incredibly high quality converters going out. The ones going out feed my monitoring setup, which I'll talk about very soon. And the inputs, one of them is for that blue tube currently, although I'm looking at getting another separate mic preamp to run with that and the other one is the thing that's right at the bottom which is the new slate vms1 preamp and um, i got that to try it out and it absolutely blows anything else out of the water that i have with things like the slate ml1 microphone which i'll talk about at the end so that adi2 is feeding my main monitors the main monitors that i have are adam's a7x's but i also you can't really see them in this shot, but down the, behind the sides of this console, I have two subwoofers. I have the Adam Sub 8s. Those really help me to not only fill out the low end, uh, especially in the super lows, but it takes the burden off the A7Xs, which means that I have a lot more clear headroom. The monitors can do a lot more of what they're designed to do. And combined with the measurement software Sonar Works 4, I'm finding that I've never been quite so happy with such a linear monitoring setup. Below that, we have an old Alesis 
AI3, which I'm not really using at the moment, but that's there as an extra set of eight ins and eight outs. Uh, that can only run at 44 or 48 kilohertz, uh, which is one of the reasons why I don't use it very often, but I can feed eight channels from the Allen & Heath desk into there and use it as additional outputs. Below that is where it starts to get interesting. Then there's the Focusrite Octo Pre Mark II Dynamic, which is kind of a, a medium tier set of preamps that I've, I've been using for a long time. Uh, they are fairly decent. Uh, it's also got eight outputs on that unit, which is fairly important to me because I'm using that to feed reamp outputs. I'm using that to feed secondary sets of monitors, including the Studio Spares SN10s, which I have up there, which are clones of the Yamaha NS10s, which in my humble opinion, sound pretty much exactly the same as NS10s. I only really use those as a secondary mix check anyway. I'm not the kind of guy to use NS10s to mix on. I just like to use them because I know they're quite bass light. They're uh, very mid-range focused, and if I can get a mix to sound good on those, I've pretty much cracked it. Next up is one of my main workhorses, the Audience ASP800. That's an eight channel preamp bank those are very clear, very crisp, very detailed, very modern. Uh, the channels one and two have these super channels where you can add the HMX and iron for extra character. Below that's my uh, XLR patch bay where 16 channels come in from the live room and then the 16 channels above are for the Octopre and the ASP respectively. And then because the patch bay is in here, I can plug things in in this room plug them straight into that patch bay so I'm not having to go rooting around the back in the middle of a session. Below that is some of the really interesting toys. We've got an LA Audio mic splitter. Now what this is, this is a very interesting piece that we recovered from that BBC building. It's not something that I would have gone out and bought myself, but it's something that I use surprisingly often. What it does is it has four separate sections, four inputs. Each one of those is at microphone level and can do phantom power and then sends that signal out to four separate outputs at unity at no additional gain. So what that means is you can then feed different preamps with exactly the same microphone signal. So if you want to compare preamps, if you want to have one that's heavily driven and one that's backed off clean as a backup maybe, you can do that with this unit. And because there are four inputs each with their own four outputs, you can link them so you can have 16 outputs for the same microphone if you're absolutely crazy. I've never actually done that myself, but I do quite often plug two or three microphones into that unit, split them out into different preamps, and it gives me some really interesting options for flavor. We talked about the VMS-1, which is some of the most state-of-the-art modern in terms of preamps, but if you want to go vintage, that's where we get into our BBC preamps. Uh, these two that are below the splitter there, they're full units. They use the AM7-13 high gain line preamp, which is essentially a mic preamp with a different impedance. So if you can send something like the mic splitter to it, then that sorts out that issue. That's basically designed like a Class A Neve preamp. It's from that kind of era. It's mid 70s design. It's all discreet. It's all through hole. It's all handmade. Quite a few of the circuit boards on those are made with silver tracks rather than green tracks. So you can see where it's all been done by hand. And the EQs on there are inductor based EQs, much like a lot of the classic Neve stuff. But instead of being a three band EQ like Neve would do, it's per octave. So I've got per octave inductor EQs, which is really quite rare. On the other side of me, I have several very similar BBC line preamps. In fact, I've got 24 of them down here, which I can patch in whenever I want. If I'm going for a super modern sound, I don't use them, but if I'm going for a vintage, thick, transformery kind of feel, I can drive those on the way in as an insert point. And that really can add some character to what I'm doing. Below those BBC units, I've got a four channel headphone amplifier as you would need in a studio, but that's actually got four separate independent inputs which means that I can have completely separate headphone mixes going to each member of the band in the live room. And below that, I have an Alesis old ADAT machine, not just with the ADAT protocol, but actually takes ADAT tapes. I've never used it with ADAT tapes, but what I'm using it for, and I'm going to do a whole other video about this, is because it can take ADAT input audio and turn it into analog, 
I'm using that to get eight channels from one of the extra ADAP ports on the RME unit that I use and using that to feed the headphone outputs. That way, I'm not wasting my really high quality audio outputs on anything where when you're listening to a headphone mix when you're tracking, you don't really need the utmost quality. You just need good quality clear stereo. And this fits the bill and I got it off eBay for about 35 pounds, which means that that's covering the custom headphone mixes for everybody. And then I do the rest of that in software. Software wise, I've always been a big fan of Reaper, which is what you see behind me now. We do use Pro Tools as well if a client comes in and specifically requests it. But nine times out of 10, if I get the choice, I use Reaper. I think it's faster, I think it's better. And I'm not gonna go on about it because I talk about it in every video pretty much that I do. But I also use that as a nerve center and most of the sounds that I do from there are either Waves plugins, Slate digital plugins, the everything bundle is pretty much my world. I use Steven Slate Drums 5, uh, I use the Sound Toys bundle a lot, I use things like Devil Lock, I use Echo Boy religiously as all my delay sounds because it just does what I want out of a delay. I'm not going to spend too long talking about the software because I use a lot of the same software that a lot of major studios use. They are the big boys for a reason. So moving on, keyboard corner, we've got a classic Yamaha DX7 Mark I that's all fired up and ready to go. And of course I've got an M-Audio key station. Uh, behind the camera is keyboard corner number two, where I've got a classic solid state organ. I've got a Studio Logic fully weighted keyboard. If the uh, player wants a completely different feel, I can just switch that out. And I've got a 61 note unweighted keyboard as well for someone who's more of a synth player who wants to just kind of tap along quickly. Then we move on to Guitar World, and there's quite a few of them. We've got my Les Paul Traditional with that lovely Inverness green colour with bare knuckle pickups. We've got a Telecaster with bare knuckle pickups. Uh, you see a pattern here. There's uh, a couple of custom Stephen Hart guitars. There's my uh, Strat copy, which I've had since I was 14 years old, I think. Maybe even younger than that, but that's been sent to more text than I can remember and it's got ridiculously low action, custom pickups, custom coil tap switching. On the rack here, we've got the uh, ever funny seven string bass, the range on which is ridiculous. We've got a little three quarter scale uh, precision bass, which I actually find has a great thump on kind of Motowny type stuff. So I keep it around because it just has a certain character. Got my old Yamaha acoustic, which has literally been set on fire. I know that guitarists bring their own gear but more often than not if they're not quite getting the sound they're looking for we've got an option on one of the racks here in the middle of guitar world we've got curiosity corner where i uh, have a lava lamp i don't know if you know but in the uk it's standard law that a recording studio has to have a lava lamp present at all times we also have a battered old sony tape machine which again i don't use very often these days i've had to have it maintained so often Moving on from the control room, we have a corridor. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, we have a corridor. <laughs> I do keep all the mic stands in there and quite often it's quite echoey compared to the other rooms that we have. So I might stick a microphone in there and use it as some sort of tonic flavor. But moving through there, we go to the live room. The live room is almost becoming a guitar cabinet storage room at this point, as you can see from this massive wall of guitar cabinets a large number of which are made by Zilla. Zilla, if you don't know them, is all handmade in Bristol in England uh, by a guy called Paul Goff and his team. And they are truly well crafted. So every time I think about getting a variation on the guitar cabinet, I call Zilla. Tucked away in the corners, they do need a bit of a tidy up, but then we have to put stuff somewhere, right? Uh, we've got our classic Slingle and Radio King snare next to our electric Joe Becky kit, which is full size shells. And in the other side, we've got a Pearl kit that's just been reskinned with all Evans EQ3s and EQ4s. You may have seen the video that I did on the kick port on the kick drum there. Last but certainly not least is our vocal booth, which is drier than a very dry thing in a rude innuendo. This was designed in conjunction with uh, an engineer that we know who's not necessarily a sound engineer but is a classical engineer. 
and we sat down, we looked at all the physics books and we thought, how can we deaden the sound across the spectrum? So if you look at the walls, they're made of this metal substance, which is a metal grill, which has certain types of hole size. Then there's acoustic foam behind that, which catches other frequencies. Anything that comes back gets caught again by that grill. And then anything that comes back is caught on a second layer of foam. You want a deadened, controlled pop vocal, we've got it. In there in the corner is a power amp for when we do reamping, and that's tucked away in its own rack for safety. And of course, with the talkback microphone in here, we make sure that we can talk to whoever's in the vocal booth and make sure they feel comfortable. At the moment, we've got the Slate ML1 microphone in there, which is the virtual microphone system, and that can sound like $10,000 mics, $30,000 mics, and you can change after the fact, you can change which microphone you were using, and it sounds absolutely incredible. We also do have tube vocal microphones on hand, We've got uh, ribbons, we've got dynamic mics, we've got an SM7 for people who want to scream. We've got choices and choices. So if you're in the Manchester area of England or just England in general, contact us, see if we're available because we do a lot of discount rates for YouTube viewers. We also do a lot of online mixing these days, online mastering. So if you've already recorded your stuff somewhere but you need someone like me to do the mixing or mastering, give us a call. We have the perfect monitoring setup to do that so we can help you all out. And I wanted to say a big thanks to all our patrons on Patreon who help us out with the filming side of things. When we're not in the studio with clients and we're filming, nothing's paying the bills. We've got, you know, light bills, we've got mouths to feed and so on and so on. So even if you could help us out with a dollar a month, that would be massively appreciated because that means we can make more tutorial videos, more guitar gear demos, more of those comparison videos that everybody loves and we can take special requests as well if we have the time because we're supported through things like patreon so big thanks to all our patreon patrons and hope to see you all in the next video thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next video goodbye thanks for watching guys if you enjoyed this feel free to check out our other videos as you can find here or check out our facebook and twitter or our Patreon page, which helps us to make more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.